I'm John Carter in Moscow, in Havana, Cuba. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra, right here in communist China, reporting from India. Hi, I'm John Carter in the Solomon Islands. I'm John Carter in Soweto, from El Salvador. I'm John Carter in Sydney, Australia. There's a battle going on, and John Carter wants to stop the killings. Welcome back, my friends. Uh, my great studio audience here in Southern California, and the great audience across America and around the world. Today we're talking about stop the killings. I know that's sort of optimistic. How on earth are you going to stop the killings? But what we're, we're saying is this, this is what we said in the first segment, you can't legislate morality. You can't do it. Uh, you can get Congress to pass all the laws they want to pass, but unless there's something changed in the heart. In the first segment, we spoke about the greatest of all laws, love God, and the second one is love your neighbor as yourself. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, you won't be sending out awful tweets and you won't be threatening people and you won't be calling people awful names, you see. And so today we're talking about how to stop the killings. In the Bible, God the Creator, now this is a follow-on from the first segment. In the Bible, God the Creator also gave two great pillars for the preservation of the human race and his people. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if most of us have never heard this before. In the Bible, God the Creator gave two great pillars for the preservation and the prosperity of his people. Number one, marriage. And number two, the Sabbath. Pillar number one is found in the book of Genesis. Genesis 1, 27 and 28. And you folks who've got Bibles here, I want you to turn to the text, please. Genesis 1, verse 27 and uh, 28. This is the first pillar. So God created man in his own image, not made in the image of a monkey. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So God made men and women. Verse 28, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. The first great institution for the salvation of the human race was marriage between a man and a woman. And the Bible says it. No apologies. Now, would you come over here to Genesis uh, chapter 2 and verse 24. It says, and God inspired this, therefore, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So when God made the human race so many years ago, for the preservation of the human race, God gave the human race marriage. And God said, for this reason, a man is going to leave his father and his mother. And he's going to be united to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. Now, the second pillar is found in Genesis 2, verses 1 to 3. That's why I'm using the first two chapters of the Bible, because these are the pillars that come from the Garden of Eden. Genesis 2, 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. And God blessed uh, the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. God gave the Sabbath. Why on earth did God give us the Sabbath? 
because the Sabbath reminds us that we came from the hand of God. I didn't come up from the slime. I came down from the hand of God. Therefore, I am distinct. I'm unique. I'm splendid because uh, I am a child of God. You can't really argue about this. Two great pillars for the stability, the salvation, uh, the sustainability, the security, and the prosperity of humanity. Marriage and the Sabbath. Now the question we need to ask is this. This should not be controversial. What is marriage? Now some people are going to come to me and they're going to say, but the Supreme Court says you're wrong. No, the Supreme Court doesn't say I'm wrong. The Supreme Court doesn't have authority in this area. Oh, yes, they do. They got authority. No, the Supreme Court is not above the Bible. You see? What I'm talking here is as old-fashioned as American apple pie that we believe in God and we believe in the Bible. Now, the question is, according to the Bible, not the Supreme Court or the Senate or some politician who's trying to get votes, what is marriage? Well, go to the words of Jesus, Matthew 19 and verses 4 and 5. Matthew 19, and he, Jesus, answered and said to them, have you not read, read where? In the Supreme Court, no, but in the Bible. Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female, male and female, and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife that's the female and the two shall become one flesh let me look you in the eye whether you wish to hear this or not it is the truth we are drowning in a sea of biblical illiteracy the bible says that god gave two great institutions marriage and the sabbath And in the Holy Bible, marriage is not the union of a man with a man, neither is it the union of a woman with a woman. Jesus said. Now you say, you have no right to say this. Yes, I do. As a a Christian and as an American citizen, I believe in the right of freedom of speech. I believe in the right to say and to preach what my conscience tells me to preach. And if some person comes along and says, you do not have that right. They do not represent the America that we love. They represent the great apostate church of the dark ages from whence we escaped. You see... We talked about that in the first talk. Now, I believe that every Christian ought to avoid whatever the cost, all hate speech. Hate speech may be guaranteed by the Constitution. You say, no, it's not guaranteed by the... Yes, it is. Because uh, what my hate, my speech may be hateful to you, but it may be the very essence of the teachings of the Bible. But Jesus said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Therefore, all speech, including hate speech, may be guaranteed by the Constitution, but hate speech is morally wrong. Never forget it. We should love people regardless of their religion. We should love Muslims and we should love Jews. We should love Catholics and Pentecostals and Adventists and Baptists and atheists. 
and we should love people without regard to their sexual orientation. Did you hear this? We should love people without regard to their sexual orientation and we should love people whatever their race may be. Racism uh, is of the devil. And today there's a lot of racism in America. We know it. Martin Luther King, one of the greatest of all Americans, uh, a great Baptist pastor said, we ought to judge a person not by the color of his skin, but by the content of his character. You see? By the content of his character. So racism and white supremacy are wrong. But, here comes a but, President Obama opened the floodgates when he encouraged this so-called uh, same-sex marriage and I'm not criticizing him uh, as a person. He stands or falls not before the Supreme Court but before Almighty God and he has a judgment day. And so do you. So do you. But he opened the floodgates he opened the floodgates not because, I believe, of conviction, but because he knew he would get more votes. It seems that so many politicians are the same. He changed the social order and overthrew thousands of years of universally accepted moral truth. People say, ah, oh, nothing. Hey, it was the greatest downfall in the history of the United States of America because for thousands of years, everybody, everybody, the Catholics, the Protestants, the Jews, the Muslims, the atheists, all believed uh, in the Bible definition of marriage. And with one stroke of a pen, Leaning on the Supreme Court, he overthrew the social order. To our shame, the so-called enlightened Western liberal countries followed America. Down the hill, New Zealand, England, Germany, Australia, and on and on. But not Russia. <laughs> not Russia. Not China. China's an atheistic country, but they said marriage is between a man and a woman. Not China, smarter than us. Not Africa, none of the Muslim countries. Since President Obama abandoned the truth of the Bible, every other deviation from the word of God has followed. We now have men becoming women and beating the women in sports. Here you got big burly guy. Hey, I'm a lady. And then he goes into sports against the ladies and it completely beats them up, trashes them. But I'm really a lady. People say this stuff with a straight face. Women declaring they're men. Where will it end? He and she are politically incorrect terms on some campuses or some American universities. And there are people, I'm offended because you call me she. You've hurt my feelings. Boo-hoo for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can't say he or she. And now we have spreading in America bestiality. But you say bestiality is so, so wrong. But why is it so wrong if there's no God? And if we came from the animals, why is it so wrong? Will anybody start to think logically? What's happened to our brains? If there is no God, then there is no man. And if you came from the beasts, then what's wrong with marrying? 
a beast. That's happening. Unions of men and women with animals. You know what follows? Death and hell. National apostasy will be followed by national ruin. America will not be great again until America is good again. We do not need more legislation. We need regeneration from inside. Marriage is the foundation of society. One man, one woman, and hopefully with kids. That's God's ideal. Today in America, the home that is the foundation of American society is on the rocks. It's attacked by spineless politicians and the godless media. Hollywood is warring against God and marriage and the masses are being brainwashed because the masses have become so ignorant. Might be a good thing if we put away our cell phones for a minute and got out our Bibles and read the Bible. Did you know that in Africa, where they have these wonderful elements, they've observed an amazing phenomenon. I've been to Africa on many occasions. I, I love Africa. If the old bull elephants are killed and the tribe of elephants is only led by the females, this is a fact. Don't get mad at me, ladies. But if you get rid of the old bull elephants... All the young bulls become juveniles, delinquents. And they go around marauding, breaking down the farms, killing people. And people say, what's happened to the young bulls? Well, their daddies went away. I can't buy you. It's a fact. One troubled segment of American society in one troubled segment. More than 75% of the boys do not have a resident father. They're murdering each other by the thousands every year and this is the truth America doesn't want to hear. At least the liberal media. They will not talk about it. Because we love all people, black, white, brown, and in between, we are called to unmask those terrible conditions that are enslaving millions in poverty and crime. The story is told by the great Moody, the great American evangelist, that there was a, a farmer and he had poison in the well. We got poison in the well now. You know what the farmer did? He got a can of whitewash. Whitewash the pump. <laughs> Whitewash the pump. And there's poison in the well. You know what we're doing? We're whitewashing the pump and there's poison in the well. You know what you've got to do? You've got to clean out the well. You've got to clean out the will. well. We're putting a Band-Aid on. My cry is bring back the marriage of the Bible and stand up for the truth. 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. That's how you heal the families. The Catholics, of course, are right when they say the family that prays together stays together. In America, Christians have been persecuted for their religious convictions about marriage. Example, the baker in Colorado, harassed, persecuted because he believes that marriage is between a man and a woman. In America! And then you've heard of Chick-fil-A in Texas. I think it was in San Antonio. 
kicked out of a major airport because although they hire and serve everyone, the owner does not believe in so-called same-sex marriage. Therefore, they were harassed. The owner also believes in the Sabbath and they close, but harassed by the so-called people who want inclusiveness. He was not inclusive enough. No, but we're going to kick you out because you don't think like we do. The terrible intolerance of the liberal left. The far left. If we transgress God's laws, we will suffer dreadful calamities. God doesn't do it. He leaves us to reap what we sow. He removes his hand and mass killings break out. Now, I believe in sensible gun laws. I don't believe in civilians owning military-type weapons. But the main problem is not the gun. It's the breakdown of the traditional home. If people didn't have guns, they'd kill each other with toothpicks. Or knives. Or sticks of dynamite. Remember the young bull elephants. So bring back marriage. And don't be afraid to stand up for what you believe in. Be an American hero. Don't be a coward. Genesis 2 verses 1 to 3. The second great institution. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his works, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. God gave the Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath to remind us that we came from the hand of God and we're not cousins to the monkeys. It's the rest day, it's the blessed day, it's the best day, and it is also the test day. The greatest theologian of the 20th century has this statement in one of his books about the Sabbath. When the holy day becomes the day of man, society and humanity wither away and the demons rule. The Sabbath reminds us that God is God, Remember what Jesus said about the Sabbath in Mark chapter 2 and verse 27. The Sabbath was made for man. It was made for your good, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. It is the Lord's day. There was a time when Americans went to church. Imagine the liberal New York Times coming out and saying this, Listen to this, my American friends. The liberal New York Times says it is time for America to have a digital Sabbath. They said these digital devices have got us by the throat and we can't think for ourselves anymore. We can't go anywhere. <laughs> got to have this thing. You can't go anywhere. You can't come into a meeting like this. But you can't wait to get out. You got to have your smoke. It's because you're an addict. You're being controlled by other forces. And so the liberal New York Times says, America needs uh, a digital Sabbath. You turn off all your digital devices on Friday night and leave them off for 24 hours, says the liberal New York Times. Why don't you do it? Or are you too much of an addict? Do you have the courage? Or are you brainwashed? Think about it. Look at Luke 4, 16 to 19. So he came to Nazareth where he'd been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And he was given the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he'd opened the book, he found the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to bring liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus was a Sabbath keeper. 
And on the Sabbath, he liberated people. Listen, the Sabbath is the family day when families go to church together. It's also called the Lord's Day. Americans once were a God-fearing people that made them strong. They went to church, they read their Bibles, but today the Sabbath is forsaken by the vast majority of Americans. You want to know the problem? We've gotten away from God. God hasn't gotten away from us. We've gotten away from God. The holy day has become the day of man and the demons are ruling. We've sown to the wind uh, and we are reaping the whirlwind. I think of the words of the song by Mary John Wilkin. I have returned uh, to the God of my childhood, to the same simple faith as a child I once knew. You want to make America great again? Make America righteous again. And the killings will cease. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello friend, I'm John Carter. Behind me is the great city of Manila, the capital of the Philippines. Did you know, this is quite amazing, there are more people living in this area than in New York City, and Christ died for these people. We came here, oh, a long time ago, back in 1984. What's that, 34, 35 years ago? And we came here with a team of young people and we came to the PICC. It is our intent to come here, hire the biggest hall that's available, the greatest outdoor stadium, whatever it takes. You've got more than 20 million souls out here. And I say it again, these are people for whom Christ died. I'm asking you to pray for the people of the Philippines. Please pray for the people here in Metro Manila. And please write to me, John Carter, Post Office Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. In Australia, write to me at Terrigal at the address that is now showing on the screen. We're back in Manila, and we're back with a message from God. That message is, Christ died for you. And Christ is coming again soon. Please support us. Write to me today, Post Office Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, and also write to me at Terrigal in Australia. Thank you for your support, and God bless you. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.